a lot of people don't realise, I'm sure, that actually none of this is rehearsed. It's, you know, there's no script, there's no particular agenda. We just pick a subject, we talk about it, see where it goes. And um, I'm going to pick today's, which is, um, I want to know about your take on, on fraud within the sort of mediumship business, and, and particularly this idea of, of cold readings, because as you know, I kind of sit on the fence about a lot of these subjects. You know, there are a lot of sort of famous cases of, um, of, of fraud in this industry, you know, right back to, you know, it's, it's early days back in America. So where do you sit on this? You know, could I accuse you of being just really good at cold reading? Yeah, you could. You, you, of course you could. Uh, everybody's got a right to say that. You know, when the problem is uh, when you give private readings, and I must be honest, I, I tend to really put too much pressure on myself, and uh, which is silly really, because you, you're really reliant on the information that the spirit world can pass over uh, to you. So we are the medium, we're the bridge between the two. Um, and yes, I suppose people, I, I, I've seen it happen. I've seen it on television where they've had people. Um, and what, they, what what people can do, and I, I know there's people skilled, because there's people who do card tricks, and uh, there's quite famous people on the British Broadcasting Company, I think it is, on the television programme. How he does it, I don't know. What are you talking about, Darren Browning? I didn't say his Channel name. 4, I think. Yeah, I didn't say Well, you know, That's obviously... That's all right, I've said it. Uh, you've said... Uh, he, the, the man is, is, is absolutely brilliant to what he does, you know, and in, in all honesty, uh, some of the things he shows in the Victorian times when they're, they're doing seances, because I just find some of it a bit peculiar myself. I want to, I tell you what I find, and this off, off, off the cuff, they have people who get, get things to get a table to move. And see if it'll tell. Yeah, I, I saw him do that at one of his shows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't see that, but I've seen people in spiritism who are paying to actually see somebody who can get a table to happen. Now, uh, 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 let's, let's take a, a little think about this one. We are talking to highly evolved spiritual people. Yeah. Right? Now, I'm trying to get complicated. It really just starting to annoy me, this one does. And we are asking them to use this wonderful energy that brings and bonds two worlds together to move a table. But what, for a bit of entertainment? They're that, that, that angry that they feel the need to tip over a mahogany coffee table. Well, it, 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 to me, it is. It may have been a hundred years ago, or a parlour trick. But when I think of this energy, and we've got people in this world who are suffering, are in pain, they've got diseases like AIDS. There's people with tremendous afflictions. There are there are people who are lost. Why would we want to waste on a party trick something when the spirit world can come through? and possibly infuse a politician's mind, even somebody who's got nothing in life, and sometimes nothing is better than ever, everything, as some would say. Well, are you not, are you not asking, asking us to, I don't know whether you even are asking us to believe, but are you asking us to believe that, you know, this that came out of a sort of, almost a Victorian entertainment kind of industry, yeah. um, much, much of it kind of debunked, you know, the table throwing and all that kind of stuff, you're still asking people to believe that the bit that you do is true. Is that, is that? Not asking them to believe. It's, you know, really, it's not me asking them to believe. It's up to them. Do they believe? You know, you can't convince everybody. Uh, I always remember uh, saying somebody, some people don't believe anything. Well, they wouldn't believe the breath we, 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 we have. Uh, unless on a frosty day, that we could see is it expires out of our bodies. So some people won't believe it. I'm sure some people pass over and enter into light and don't know that they won't accept it. We, I'm not, we're not here to, to do that. Uh, we cannot uh, make somebody believe. All we can do is give a door and say to them, there's the door, you, know, you want the key. It inevitably comes to this, this idea of proof, which we'll, we'll come on to it in a minute, and what is proof and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But what would you say would be... So I'll just move this in. I have a good question. Okay, yeah, sorry. What would you say uh, to, to me if I said, you're actually good at cold reading, you just don't realise it. So that's what you're doing. You're looking for tells, uh, you know, visual clues, eyebrows raised as a response to questions, that kind of thing. Uh, and I'm not necessarily suggesting that you're doing it in a deliberately fraudulent manner. It's perhaps that you've acquired this ability and you don't realise that you're actually picking up very, you know, subtle, subtle, subtle clues, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question because I, I think everybody has to ask that question to themselves um, 
the information I've picked up, and bear in mind you can't be all things to all people, nobody can, but pe things I've picked up over the years and other people who I've seen, you couldn't possibly guess it. It's impossible to guess it. You know, um, you, you just couldn't do that. So there is too many people who give too much information over too many years for it not to be true. Well, let's, let's, let's take a different take on this, right? Rather than your, your best of, mm. you know, well, I suppose you could say, well, if you do it long enough, you're going to get some of it right. Yeah. Let's, let's forget that and let's look at what you've done in the last week. Who have you seen? What, what, proof, what proof have you offered? Well, um, over the last week, well, I've took a couple of meetings. Obviously, you don't remember the individual and you couldn't give the individual's name anyway because of confidentiality. But I've took meetings in, in uh, different counties in the, in the UK. I've, I've had some people come to see me. Uh, and some months ago, I had a lady came to see me. She did sit with me for about a, an hour. Uh, but I didn't believe I'd given her the right information. Uh, and so I told her that. And so she said, oh fine but it's okay with me it might be might be but it wasn't to me but though over the over that period of time i picked up uh, some very nice information enough people who either gone through twitter or facebook or various other ways or emailed me or after the meeting said fantastic can't believe what you told me uh, but i'm no different to everybody else and a lot of other people will pick up that information if we get a part of information we put, give people a chance to pick it up so i have had people who's come back to me um and said, well, that's great, but, the, you know, it's like the biggest worry in our work is you can't be all things. So perhaps if I could read people's faces and say if they nod on one side, it means this or that. If I could do that, I would, I could make a fortune. But I would really feel that if I made a fortune, actually, inside, I've lost everything. Because it's not about money. It's not about fame. Well, here's one of the, here's the inter one of the interesting points, isn't it, that... Why would somebody do this? Have you made a lot of money doing this? <laughs> I've got an accountant friend of mine who I've been in self-employed for many, many years. He thinks I'm absolutely crazy. I suppose I'm really, in some, to some people's eyes. But no, I, you know, you, you'd lose money. When I think that I've travelled miles and miles, and other mediums are doing it today, everywhere, uh, are doing it, not because of that. If you had to live on it, we would make. But there again. Uh, the holy man who's in India, who gets fed by the local people, doesn't do it for money. Uh, the rewards are of a greater thing in its service to humanity. And our way is to serve by trying through the gifts we have to open that gift, to develop that gift, to give somebody something that will help them. And really it is uh, it's a linkage with all the people in the world, whether they're spiritualists or whatever, whether, whether they're religious or non-religious, it doesn't really matter, but there are many people who walk earth, both today and in the past and in the future, who are like lighthouses and we cast light. And it's up to people whether they want to accept that light. And I find it sad because for every fraud that we get, and we do get them, they have been around, they've been in the national newspapers, that really knocks us back. That, that, that's sad. I obviously I, I've I've kind of uh, known you for a little while now, and there are n knowing a little bit about the, the type of work that you do, you you could have made a lot of money, couldn't you? When you, well, when you think um, that people, a lot of people ply this type of trade in working man's clubs, yeah, uh, and you know, and, and they're not to be sniffed at the amount of money you can earn <coughs> in the working man's club scene and the pub scene, yeah, you know, the hiring pubs, venues, the your Albert halls and stuff. I know you've done on occasion, but yeah, larger venues. Yeah. you know at 20 or 30 quid a ticket it's it's interesting that you you've you've not taken that path no and well, no. Is, it's, is it's that not fun. What, what's the reason why why you haven't you know done some fill work and and uh, paid the mortgage that way why why have you chosen not to no, pay the mortgage that way i've never uh, to me my, my spiritual teacher always said it was his life to me it's, he always said it was a part of my life i can remember one night taking a theater it's in grantham in lincolnshire it was a full house uh, from a financial point of view, it was great. And afterwards, I said to my wife, I said, I'd rather be anywhere else in the world uh, because I, I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't fulfilling. And, and if I don't fulfill myself, money is nothing. Money is only useful in this world. Yeah, we, we all need it. We all need to live. We all need to buy bread and food and water everywhere in the world. But the reality of it, you know, it, that is not my motivator. My motivator is that I have a gift. I was 
given the gift before I entered this life. Later in life, through various things, I've always been drawn to spiritual things. I've always been drawn to bereaved people. Uh, some might call it death, but I think it's life. But, but that's came along. And then after my father passed, I saw him. And I saw him as clear in my mind now as it was way back in 1971. And that is a stimulus, because I really think I was really, really lucky to see him. And, and if other people can get a glimpse of what I saw, then that's great. And at the end of the day, as we say, and I said it before, there are no pockets in shrouds. And what it is, it's important that that spirituality fulfills us. Now, some religions, they live on, if, if it's this book or whatever book they read, that's their truth. We have to extend a little bit further. And so it's working within that. But, you know, for 30 years of doing it and travelling... I was going to say, you're probably coming up 30, 35 years. 30, 30 plus years now. And, uh, you know, I've seen some changes, some subtle changes. Uh, and, and sadly, I, I, I do find it rather sad that it's become more and more religious based rather than the truth. And I see spiritual work as, a, as my personal truth and the truth of many other people. Uh, I don't want to, to be held into religious dogma. Uh, I'm sure that there's the, it's been an old joke that when you pass over into the next world, there will be only one certain religion. It's all inside a tower. And the reason is they're the only ones who think they're there, which is silly. At the end of the day, we're on a path. And you know, if I'd have been born in another part of the world, I would have a different, perhaps, religion or, or, or view. But I happen to be here uh, and at this time, and I can use my spirituality. And I think if you can develop that spirituality and open uh, your, your own capacity and possibly cast light onto others, that's another point, is, you know, there's so many people seeking light, they forget to cast shadow onto other people. Our work is not to cast shadow, it's to bring light. And, and light illumines the mind, and it's the mind that sees the glory of the great day. If nothing else, after 30 odd years, you should have racked up a lot of po positive karma points. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I don't know about it. I, I, you know, the problem is, is if we're doing it for the reason of, of, of notching points up, it's sort like, of <laughs> frequent flyer miles of the, of, of the spiritual kind of it's like getting bonus points when you top up at a certain petrol station. No, I don't think you do it in that re reason. Some people might want to do. I think you used to pay the way to God. I think you used to. The rich people used to get nearer and nearer with the tomb to the uh, to the uh, to the altar in uh, in in England and possibly in Scotland as well. Uh, you could do it that way, but I think that would be a bit of a shallow um, inward think. <laughs> and for the wrong reason. I'll come back to you in a few years and see whether you still think the same. Yeah, well, that's if I'm still about. I yeah. might have moved on by then. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>